Twinema. 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 Cinema. Twinema. Cinema. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of Twinema Cinema. I'm your host, Joey. And I'm your other host, Max. And we are excited to be bringing you this episode because although it is about cold weather creatures, it feels warm in my heart. Yes, and we're on the verge of spring break as it is, so this felt as appropriate as any. And, as Max just made mention, this was suggested by one of our loyal listeners who recently also dropped us a coffee donation. So thank you, Melissa, for both suggesting the episode and giving us some delicious lattes. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I prefer my lattes mocha And mine was quite foamy. <laughs> and uh, I don't believe we've actually said what our films are this week, but they are Surf's Up and Happy Feet. Both involving multiple penguin protagonists. And uh, yeah, they were both released in 2006. Which was a good year. It's the year we graduated from high school. It's also the same year as Christopher Nolan's The Prestige, which we determined in an earlier episode to be probably Chris Nolan's best movie. That is exactly what we determined. (laughs) Uh, But I am surprised by there being two dueling films from that same year. Cinema is a mystery, and boy, do we just keep hitting it on the head. Cinema. I I do not understand your commentary. I don't think I was making it any deeper than it was. We just keep commenting on it. Okay, that... Perfect. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't trying to be clever there. So, Max, do you want to roll right into our first segment of the show? Which is... What What can you remember? remember? Uh, Yeah, I suppose I could. As, uh, yeah, um, I've always seen one of these movies. Oh, Lord, I was about to say March of the Penguins, but oh, no, (laughs) that's a different one. That was two years before this. Probably the logical inspiration for these two films, if we're being honest. Oh, yeah, Penguins were hot. And, uh... (laughs) Ah, yes. And that's pretty much what I remember of Happy Feet as well, as it starts off with two incredibly hot penguins voiced by incredibly hot people. I think, uh, what was it, Hugh Jackman and Nicole Kidman were penguin parents? I don't actually know, but that's also the one film that I've seen, is Happy Feet. Obviously, it's about some some penguins that dance, some that sing, and, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, the only reason I really know about it is because it's the reason that George Miller is an Oscar winner. Did that win Best Animated? feature it did (laughs) i i thoroughly enjoyed seeing that film i don't remember nearly anything about it honestly other than two things number one robin williams plays two separate characters in the movie and number two there is a uh, musical number involving somebody to love by queen and i remember just kind of loving the shit out of that moment other than that i don't really remember what happens in that movie yeah i know there's some kind of journey uh that the penguin has to undertake and my stupid brain wanted to say oh he's probably gonna go get a a pebble to woo his (laughs) penguin love but that's a completely wrong movie oh man i just recently rewatched uh the pebble and the penguin and i still get feelings from it i still do have a a very emotional reaction to the movie but it is not as good as i remember unfortunately (laughs) however i do love the musical number the good ship misery that's really fun oh god was that a don bluth one yes it was i do think that happy feet had to have taken some inspiration from the pebble and the penguin and i imagine surfs up does too so, since we've neither neither of us have seen Surf's Up, let's do a combined one here, and we'll both try and figure out what the movie's about. Does that sound good? Okay, and we both know enough improvisers that we can, uh, you know, skim some of their tool set here. So, uh, let's just do a yes-end version of this movie for a little bit. So, it's about a penguin voiced by Shia LaBeouf, and... He happens to be looking to go further north... So that it's warmer and he can take surfing lessons. And he's going to go to the tropics where it's very warm and... Meets up with some other birds. Maybe a toucan. 
who can let's let's call him Sam. <laughs> uh and oh god, I'm trying to remember. Does this turn into a competition? I think it might be a competition. And of course he's gonna fall in love with his fellow surfers and they refuse to accept him as one of their own. And because he's one of them South Pole penguins and we don't like their kind here. And <laughs> <laughs> These other surfers are an otter, a beaver who surfs on his tail, dolphins, and a squid. There's a squid. Oh, there better be a squid. Now that you've said it, if there's not a squid, I'm going to be really, really upset. Um, ooh, The squid ends up surfing on top of a whale. Mmm, now that's a whale of a tail. And that surfs up. <laughs> and that's the movie. <laughs> You're welcome. When it probably doesn't end up like any of that. I think if I'm making a realistic guess, I think I'm pretty right with our, our starting point that he's a penguin who wants to go to warmer, wa warmer weather, much like the classic uh, Disney cartoon with the penguin who builds his own little boat. Ah, uh, yes. I think it was like a segment of the Three Caballeros. Yes, that. Yes, you are correct. That is what that's from. Um, but I feel like that's... Which, as a side note, God, that movie is horny. Donald wants to screw everything that moves in that film. <laughs> I mean, how do you think he has so many quote-unquote nephews? Oh, God. Um, yeah, I don't exactly. Think about that's, that particular that's what proposition. happened. But yeah, if you have Disney Plus, rewatch the Three Caballeros. It's delightful, but also it is thirsty AF. And so I think they drew some inspiration from that, and we have him go to warmer waters, either because he's a gifted surfer already and he's looking for the next big wave. Actually, you know what? This movie probably takes place in Australia. If I'm being honest, that's probably where it takes place. I know. If we're talking about warmer weather, I think South America actually has some penguins. Yeah, they do. But I'm just saying in terms of being um, a huge surfing community, I don't know. I guess South America probably has a, some pretty big surfing competitions. I guess it could be, too. But unless there's, you know, a short, angry penguin voiced by uh, James Belushi, I really don't care. <laughs> my god there are some great things about that movie i just think the pacing's weird now that i'm an adult anywho liter literally any movie where tim curry is the bad guy is worth watching oh yes there's the facts fern gully excellent back to these movies <laughs> What else, what else do we want to say before we move on and actually watch the films? Uh, I think we, uh, I think, you know what? We nailed it on the head. And uh, unless Morgan Freeman is narrating in one of them, I think there's nothing else to say. All right. Sounds good to me. Well, we will be back in approximately 4.5 hours. Which is conservative because these are children's movies and we know they're over three hours each. Oh, dear God. For this week's films, Happy Feet and Surf's Up, Happy Feet can be currently found, along with its sequel on HBO and HBO Max. Oh, the sequel can be found there too? That's wonderful. And Surf's Up can be found on Netflix or wherever you can rent your movies online, because all rental houses are dead and it is sad. You know what's better than a good cup of coffee? A free cup of coffee? That's right! But what's even better is a metaphorical coffee. A cup of coffee that you, the fans, can gift to us, the podcasters. And you can do just that at coffee.com slash twinimacinema. Think of it as a well-deserved pat on the back for hours of entertainment in an inane babble we've given you. So visit coffee.com, ko-fi.com slash twinimacinema. Thank you ahead of time. Cheers. <laughs> I can't do this. I can't do this. I got to trick myself. Boy, look at that. What? Ah! As soon as there was the first wave, there was the first surfer. You know, all you needed was like a piece of driftwood or a block of ice, and you were off. What you doing with your feet? I thought it was kind of cute. But it just ain't panther. For all our sakes, you must stop this freaking us with the feet. Oh, that was spectacular. Somebody help the chicken. Man, this guy is so accidentally cool. I think 
He's singing. I'm not singing. That, that's not singing. Yeah, I heard an animal once do that, but then they rolled him over. He was dead. I'm gonna be telling your story, happy feet, long after you go. So Cody, when you take your first wave and the whole island's there to watch, what's it gonna be like? It's gonna be amazing, and I hope the camera's rolling because you're gonna want to watch it over and over again. What do you think of those fine, chilly movies we just watched? Well, uh, one of them was a little warmer than the other, but other than that, man, I quite enjoyed them. I am a little conflicted, though, because I think I want to... Is it make love to a penguin? Well, I mean, depends on how you feel about the penguin, but... I do think that might be a little wrong, and uh, PETA will be after you after they listen to this podcast. If it's a sentient, thinking penguin who gives consent, is it okay? Is it okay to have sex with that penguin? Do you speak penguin? Not currently, but I'm willing to learn. Well, uh, man, I just, after watching Futurama so many times, you never screw a <laughs> penguin over. I forgot about that moment. Uh, I love when he takes off his suit coat because he's just he t- spent the whole episode teaching them anything that's not black and white. What is it like? Kill it. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that's not black or white attack. And then he's like, oh, well, time for me to take off my tuxedo. Do-do-do. Immediately gets murdered. Um, <laughs> I They were a lot of fun. I really did enjoy these movies quite a bit. One of them is a lot weirder than I remember, though. That that really caught me off guard. In retrospect, we should have been prepared for that kind of weirdness because we already gone through one of his movies on this podcast. Yeah, that's true. He's uh, This is his second appearance as director, and of course we're talking about George Miller, the director of Babe. Although it should be clear, he did not direct Babe, but he might as well have Oh, son Babe. of a bitch. The producer slash writer of Babe. You are correct. My bad. Almost same difference, but... What, Not whatever. almost same difference. Semantics. Somebody, has, they're two different jobs. <laughs> Is a race Working car driver the same as an ambulance driver? No, they're similar, but they're very different. Well, they're both the same if they're on the track. Well, I think we are getting off track, <laughs> and it is time for us to bring it back and talk about some similarities between these two movies. I so, mean, who's that? Wait, who's who's there? Oh, Who, God. Oh, if it isn't my twin cousins. Oh snap. I have Joey. You beautiful boys. Uh, you did, didn't give did, him, you didn't give him the login information, did you? It, no, I didn't. I I'm is is this public? Does it is it somewhere in like one of our family groups or something? I got nope. it through the family messenger. No. You know <sighs> that shared Facebook Messenger app that we all share, the whole Twinima clan. We're <sighs> Just chatting all day, and you dropped in this link, and all I could think is, wow, my favorite cousins want me to join them in a video chat. And so here I am. Oh, you know, Terry's Cousin doing, Andrew. Know cousin, cousin Andrew, is there, uh, is, is there yeah, a particular uh, reason why you jumped in on this? Like, you just, you wanted, you thought we wanted you to be a part of it, but like, what made you want to be a part of this particular one? One what? What what are you talking about? I mean, you jumped into our video podcast chat. Vi- stream. Video. Wait, podcast? This is a podcast? This what is the a video What the hell are you chat. doing here, Andrew? What? I, I'm here to talk to my favorite cousins. Well, th- I'm we're... here to talk to my favorite cousins, Joey. Joey, what, what's... You're Joey, right? <laughs> yes, that's that's correct. No, Max. Max, I was talking to Joey. Joey, I was talking... You, you're, you're one of my favorite cousins. Wait, what about me? <laughs> I, yeah, I, that's I'm talking to you, Joey. I okay, uh, Max. Put like a uh, you guys are put twins. like a hat You're on. So put, similar. put a hat on, I, Max, so he can distinguish us. Make it a little easier. Oh, Max, I'm sorry, Max. I'm there sorry. I thought you were Joey. You guys just look so much alike. It's weird. Your voices sound so different. But we're yet, different people. Just, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's been a long time. We've been in quarantine for a long time. It's been a long year, and. You guys, this is the first time you've shared a video chat app with me and and with the Using family. The, the quotes here, we shared it, yeah. You shared it. And 
now I'm here, and I'm so excited to be here on this video chat with you. Well, what yeah. we're what we've been doing, and I I feel like you know this, but maybe maybe you don't. It's possible. We've been doing a podcast for about a year now, where we talk about dueling movies called Twinema Cinema. Uh-huh. But that's our family name is Twinema. It's Joey sure. and Max Twinema, that's and exactly- I am Andrew Twinema. We share. My mom is your dad's sister. Yeah, I'm not even go- Wait, is that how he's related to us? I don't even know. But that's that's why it's called Twinema Cinema. It's a play on us being twins. It's a play on the last name. It just works. It works in every pa- in every facet, every conceivable way. Yeah. Uh, well, that's just so dandy. Okay, so I'm on a podcast right now. We're yes, podcasting. You're on a podcast about and we movies. Are, we're talking about two movies this week. We're talking about Surf's Up and Happy Feet. Oh. Do you, do you know anything about penguins? You decided to crash our party here, so do you even know anything about penguins or penguin movies? Oh. Penguins, you said. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're, t- you're talking about you're talking about penguins? Yeah, you know, little guys, sometimes they tap dance, sometimes they surf. You know, the the southern gentleman. Oh, boy. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. I know him. I'm very aware. Oh, that's... Uh, your Got tone of voice it. is concerning me, Cousin Andrew. Uh, do, you, do you have a problem with penguins? Cousins. Max, Joey. No, no, either way around. I have uh, Joey, Max. Thank you. I forgot that Joey's the elder and better of the two. Um, so he comes first. Uh, I have a confession to make. So I'm so excited to be on your movie podcast because I love movies. I love them. I love them. That, re- that remains to be seen. But I also I carry a great shame. I'm a recovering penguophile. Is that recovering? I mean, like, with, with a lot of uh, addictions, you are always addicted. You just are actively trying to not live that lifestyle anymore and so it it seems like this might have been a really bad episode for you to to jump in on us with i don't want to hurt you in any way i want no i i I need to stay joey joey thank you so much for recognizing my shame and understanding where i'm coming from we wouldn't be at i love what max please please we, we wouldn't be all upset if you chose to not be on the podcast after this revelation no no i'm staying because i love my cousins I haven't seen you guys in ages, and I love movies, so the pros are going to outweigh the cons. I'll get through it. I'll get through it. Okay. But we're talking about Happy Feet and Surf's Up. Yeah, the two yes. films from, uh, what was this year, Max? Is it 2007? 2006 and 2007. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, well, oh, wait. He, oh, do do oh, you know something about these movies? Um, I haven't seen them in years, but... Yeah, no, I haven't seen him in years. He must have been in the throes of his penguophile nature during the time of these movies. Well, I mean, you're here. It doesn't seem like there's any getting rid of you. So we might as well just move on and get this rolling. So I'm going to just I throw it to Max usually at this point, And we, we start talking about similarities. So, Max, what are some similarities between these movies? And just based on what Andrew said right there, he's going to have some input. Well, I mean, for starters, if we're really going to do this, because if we don't, we're going to hear about it at Christmas. I just know it. Yep. But um, we have the obvious. They're both computer animated movies. This is a good place to start. Good place to start. Max, Max, good observation. Solid, solid, good one. Good one. I think a, a real uh, obvious one that we got to hit as well is that our protagonists are, in fact, penguins. Hmm. Yep. They are. It's true. Yeah. You, you okay there? <laughs> yep. Well, not only that, they're, penguin, they're penguins with a particular set of skills. What are their skills? Describe their skills. Uh, well, one is dancing, and the other one is surfing. That's true. Different skills, but very unique amongst their, uh, their family and their brethren on their uh, Antarctica... Which is where they're both from. Mm. I believe one is from uh, Shiverpool. Which I feel like is in Antarctica, though, if I, if yes, I remember. Yes, it's correct. Okay. I was just being a little bit more specific. I mean, I don't really, you know, I, I just kind of knew that. I don't know how I knew that. And it was no big deal. Yeah, they're kind of riffing on the Beatles there, and it was funny. Um, Mumble, who can tap dance when every other penguin sings in his clan. And then we got Cody, Cody Maverick who's a surf master better than anyone else in Antarctica. Oh, but that turns out to not be very good within the whole wider world, does it, Max? Yes, the whole wide, wet world of sports. Yeah, 
Mr. Cody Maverick gets a little humbled there in that surf sub, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Some humble mumble pie, if you will. <laughs> I'll take that. Along the way, each of our protagonists runs into some uh, strange outcast friends who uh, end up helping them change for the better. Yeah, and uh, surfs up what we have Chicken Joe, voiced by John Heater, a chicken from Wisconsin who also surfs. I can't, can't, I cannot condone that chicken. As a proud Minnesotan, I cannot condone anything that is from the state, if you want to call it that, of Wisconsin. <laughs> I mean, f- fair, fair, go pet go. But yeah, given that nothing from Minnesota has actually won anything ever, so we're going to ignore that comment. We have more lakes. We have more lakes than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got more water because you got more leaks, son. You know, we also have Prince, which makes an appearance in that Happy Feet movie. Ooh, good transition, Cousin Andrew. Both of these movies have a lot of popular American music in them. Happy Feet being a jukebox musical, much like Moulin Rouge, and both have Nicole Kidman. And uh, Surf's Up also has a bangin' soundtrack, too. Sure does. One of them, the music actually comes from the Penguins themselves, and then the other one, it is just more of a soundtrack, but definitely popular music for sure. Joey, I believe you're saying that one uses diegetic music while the other uses non-diegetic music. What, did you go to film school? Jesus. And there are penguins in both. I mean, I... (laughs) And there are penguins in... God damn it. Um, (laughs) Jeff Jeff Bridges knows the words to wipe out, so that's kind of diegetic. They know those songs. uh, But that's not how the funk... This is a difference that we can talk about in just a minute. Are there any other similarities that we are missing before I get frustrated with you, Max? (laughs) Yeah, Max. Well, I'm, yes, because I'm I'm the root of You're frustrating. You're frustrating. You're frustrating. <laughs> Where was I? Oh yeah, uh, a problem. I'm, I'm just very, kidding. I love my cousins. Like it's a problem I'm very familiar with right now, and that's frustration with family members, as both of the families in these movies do not understand their kids. Ooh, that that's very good point. Or relatives. Do they just kind of keep them at arm's length, and even flipper flippers length. <laughs> In Flipper's like, Thank you, Max. They even shun them in, in the movies to an extent that causes, I would say, some pretty severe emotional trauma in uh, Happy Feet specifically. Now, that's something that I connected with personally as someone who is a member of a family and has something that makes them a little different from the others and makes them... I mean, I was ostracized. It's tough being a recovering penguophile. So yeah, I connected. I connected with Mumble and with Cody. Well, no one cares. Since this is the first I've heard about it, that's interesting because I didn't, I didn't really know that about you. So maybe, maybe this will actually help bring you closer to some of the family being on our podcast. From what, my, from what I know, I, I don't know anybody that listens to your podcast in the family. Well, th- that's fine. Tara was on the podcast earlier. You know, our sister. Tara, Tara was on the podcast. Yeah, miss that girl. See, at least, at least. Well, I don't know if she listened. Anyhow. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. Another similarity is that they actually have shared species of penguins. There is the rockhopper penguin in both movies. The groucho penguin. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) The groucho penguin. With the eyebrows. I just called the Belushi penguin, honestly. Oh, Belush. Yeah, that works. (laughs) Because we're already talking about Pebble and the penguin in the first block. So, yeah. Oh, Pebble. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Yep. Pebble. That penguin. Had a pebble. Um, but they also had, like, so, yeah, there's the, the Groucho Penguin, which uh, Robin Williams voices one of. He has multiple voices. He also voices the Latino Antarctican Penguin. Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, I think they're both Antarctican. Max, you nailed saying that word. It's a hard word to say. Antarctican. It only took you one take. One go. That you're aware of. <laughs> He's been practicing for weeks. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, so we have that. We have emperor penguins. We got a bunch of other kinds, but uh, primarily emperor, I guess, uh, as far as most people are concerned. Empress, yeah. Em- yeah. What? Empress. Empress penguins. There's only one main female character in Happy Feet, so the rest are all emperor penguins. Okay, whatever. Embrace the patriarchy, Max. Whatever. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, if we're embracing the patriarchy, we might as well discuss the male penguin similarities in these movies. One of them being a very simple bit in Surf's Up, but a very important plot point in Happy Feet, which is where the male penguin loses one of the eggs that they care for 
briefly, one of them leading to uh, some serious guilt. I believe in one movie they say it takes a real man to sit on an egg. I think we can all take something from that. I'm sitting on an egg now. Max, thank you. Good for you. Sometimes you've just got to sit on that egg and help bring it to life. Oh, no, it, it, it's scrambled now. Oh, God. I sat on an omelet. You got a hot butt, Max. Uh, one of the last issues we have in here is uh, daddy issues. Oh, yeah. I, I know about that. So I've heard. In Surf's Up, Cody Maverick. Ooh, almost forgot his last name right there. I was going to call him Cody Wyoming for a second. Uh, but Cody Maverick. Don't you dare. Cody Maverick uh, lost his father at a young age, which made me laugh out loud hysterically in the movie with that reveal. It was pretty, pretty ridiculous where they just pull back to show a leopard seal just about to bite his face off. Oh, tragic, but hilarious. Not quite as good as Chicken Joe's dad's death. <laughs> Chicken Bob, I believe was his name. Six piece combo. Uh, well, both of the dads were named Bob. <laughs> oh, strange. I didn't catch that. But then also in Happy Feet, our daddy issue stems from Memphis, his uh, father pretty much shutting him his entire life and just shutting down all of his dancing. It's just like he's trying to keep this kid's dancing in the closet. And it's just it's slowly destroying Mumble's life until he eventually breaks free. Well, yeah, and they they play that as Memphis being repressed or closeted as well, because he picks up dancing pretty quickly at the end of the movie. Yeah, it's like he's been dancing all along. On the inside. I get it. I connected with this character because I, too, have something very deep inside me that I, I have to hold very close and I can't. Let it out. That's gross. Well, that's the thing about Memphis, too. And so I think this is a thing they were going for, is that Memphis's dancing is what caused Mumble to have problems. And so, because that's, he danced and that's how he lost the egg. And so he hates himself so much for dancing that he just doesn't want his son to make the same mistakes that he made. What they loved about him all along was who Memphis actually was. And you finally get to see him at the end of the movie, even though he's got a very strange Southern accent that confused me the whole time. Well, I mean, he's supposed to be Elvis, and then uh, Nicole Kidman is supposed to be Marilyn Monroe. How do you come to this conclusion? Is this Was this obvious to you, Cousin Andrew? Yeah, of course. Okay, so I'm the only His one... His name is Memphis. He talks like Elvis. He's played by Hugh Jackman. Perfect sense. Norma Jean is Marilyn Monroe's real name. And voiced by Nicole Kidman. Perfect sense. Sorry, guys, for not being fully versed in pop culture, okay? My apologies. Also, she has that mole. It's kind of a dead giveaway. Did she literally have a mole and I just didn't see it? I don't see moles, I guess. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Um, I just face penguin face blindness? <laughs> Moving on back to the fun with popular music. Big blindness. <laughs> Big blindness. But the music, one of the huge differences, which... I disagree with Max's assessment here, is that the music in Surf's Up is all non-diegetic sound. It's just coming from elsewhere. It's not part of the story, where Happy Feet is definitely more of an actual musical, where the characters are performing most of the music. It comes from them singing and uh, dancing. Yeah, they get some music out of the dance beats. Yeah, it's interesting because they do dance right away. Like, the first thing that you see in Happy Feet is they zoom in from space down into <laughs> Antarctica because George Miller doesn't know how to do anything halfway. And we immediately go into this, like, Buzzly, Busby Berkeley routine with the penguin singing Prince. And they are kind of dancing. So it is a little weird that they think that Mumble's dancing is an affront against their culture. But I suppose maybe it's tap in particular. Maybe they're just not tappers down there in Antarctica. I mean, maybe if it isn't accompanied by singing as well, it's an affront to the great Gwyn. Yes, the great Gwyn, we stand. Yep. I think that that's a pretty fair point. But also, I think when things get rough in a society, people cling to things that give them hope and give them structure. And then the religious nature of the colony certainly changed. And they had to repress certain urges because they had to work together to survive. So anyone who was standing out was seen as a problem. Which makes sense from that point of view, although it is definitely harmful and dangerous. And uh, I also hate it. Stick with that. Just throwing it out there. I hate their. I hate that they repressed Mumble. Damn it! I caught it. 
I'm catching it. I, you threw it? I caught it. Never mind the fact that, like, anyone who's a little different is gonna get blamed for stuff that goes wrong if nothing else has gone wrong previously. Exactly. Oh, that's right, because in Happy Feet, unless, Joey, did you just say this, that they blame Mumble's dancing as the reason that the fish have gone away like they don't have enough food anymore i didn't yeah. quite say that but that's kind yeah that's what i was alluding to is that it seemed to coincide with their fish going away is this uh i guess it seems like this perversion of the culture according to the elders uh, that came from that generation it's a little it's it's a little too real at moments in happy feet for sure but i think that's this is a pretty good time we've already transitioned into it but these are, we're now in the differences section between these two movies. It, it should be fairly obvious. These are different movies because they're different genres. They both might have penguins, but one is a musical love story, and the other one is a mockumentary sports movie. I wouldn't call it a mockumentary, actually. I would call it a documentary. An animated documentary about Cody Maverick, the greatest surfer to come out of Antarctica. Except it's not about him, though. Joey, I, I, sorry, Max, just going to interrupt. Joey, by saying that it's a true documentary, a real documentary, are you positing that Cody Maverick and his world of surfing penguins is real? No, no, no. It's a real one? Pe the island of Pengu is real? I, well, I, I th If so, where be it? And Shiverpool, what part of Antarctica is that in? It's, uh, it's just outside Wales? What? God, well, I Wales hate, with an H. That's I right, Wales so with much, an H, I love you. which is not part of the United Kingdom, nor is it New South Wales, which is part of Australia. This is Wales, W-H-A-L-E-S, that is, yes, a part of Antarctica. That's right. It's a fish pun, you see. So it's a real place. It's a real documentary. I do want to take a moment just to attest to the insanity of an animated film being a documentary. Because a documentary is, like, defined by being spontaneous and observing what's happening. But the idea of an animated movie, it has to be so planned out years in advance that they would plan out years in advance spontaneous camera movement. It just boggles my brain. It's great. And I really do like how they, they shot... I mean, the two movies look dramatically different. One of them, for sure, is because they are emulating the documentary style. You can even tell the differences in like lighting and the graininess that changes at night in some situations because it's more of a verite style of camera movement. And it really caught me off guard that they were doing such a good job of this, which is why I, f I feel it's more of a documentary than a mockumentary. Although I'm, I'm not 100% sure. No, it is. Joey, why, why are you backing down from this? You know what? It's because we, we just discussed it. It's a documentary, The Isle of Pengu. And the city of Shiverpool in Wales, Antarctica, is a real place. It's mainly Cody because Maverick Max, is a real guy. My my twin sometimes intimidates me. Okay, it's it. That's just how it goes. He's an intimidating guy, but we love him nonetheless. But besides that, it's because I'm wearing the hat right now, isn't it? I mean, the hat looks good on you, Matt, Joey. Joey, Max looks good in that hat. It's a good looking hat. Yeah. Good choices were made. Max, would you describe the hat for a second? What's the, what's the hat look like? Uh, I mean, it's a it's a regular you know baseball cap. It's uh, from my favorite local team in Shiverpool. That's right. The Shiverpool Narwhals. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm They don't play too many games because uh, they end up, you know, skewering their opponents more often than not. But uh, they're undefeated champs. They are. They're undefeated. And they don't get let the fact that Narwhals are from the North Pole uh, and the Northern Hemisphere get them down. Thank you, Cousin Andrew. Guys, I just want to point out, like, so we're in the different differences section. That's what this, this section of the, the podcast is about. Yep, yes, that's correct. it. As a recovering penguophile, I appreciate that these films, these two films about penguins, there's not a lot of movies about penguins. And now we're talking about a time, 2006, 2007, America was struck with penguin fever. The documentary March of the Penguins had been released in 2005. So George Miller's Happy Feet was kind of a blessing that it was released a year after that documentary, which was not planned because, as you both know, animation takes an exorbitant amount of time to make. So it was just pure dumb luck that it worked that way for them and it paid off in dividends uh, for them. But there's not a lot of Penguin movies. And as someone who loves Penguins as much as I am, I do, I appreciate how... Do, do or did? Are you recovering or not? I, I, Max, I still love them, but it has to be in a different way. 
It has to be an appreciation. And I appreciate how these two movies about penguins are so different from one another, especially even in just the styles of animation. In Happy Feet, George Miller is going for a more, it's not quite photorealism, but it is, it's slightly stylized, but it's going in that direction. And then in Surf's Up, it is a much more traditional, exaggerated character animation. It's similar to an earlier episode we did between Ants and A Bug's Life. It's the exact same thing. Ants went for a more realistic look. The ants actually had, you know, six legs, whereas uh, Bug's Life, they only had, uh, you know, four legs or four limbs. Here we got uh, Happy Feet with their photorealistic faces. You got uh, kind of side eyes with the beaks in the middle. And uh, Surf's Up is, I think this came out before the game did, but very much of the uh, Angry Birds design, so it's more pleasant to look at. I appreciate the penguins. I appreciate what George Miller was doing in Happy Feet. I would think for most people, when they're watching the movie and they don't appreciate penguins quite as much as I do and love them as much as I do, they might not connect with them as much because they look more photorealistic realistic it's kind of like how everybody got freaked out when the most recent lion king movie came out and they were like what is going on with all these photorealistic animals and why does it look so stupid when they're singing (laughs) you know (laughs) i think i think you're right i think that's certainly a part of happy feet and i think that's another very intentional distinction too is that mumble looks different He's got a different look to him. His eye color is different. He's specifically othered from the rest of the penguins to give him more character and to make him more likable and to to endear him to us a little more. And I think that also just holds true when you follow his journey is the other penguins, although they are a different style, the rockhopper penguins, they don't. The grouchos, quite, yeah. Yeah, they don't they don't quite feel as a a realistic in their look i'm not sure why that is maybe it's just the performances of the the voice cast and then also just the movements that they endow upon those characters but that's one huge difference too suddenly popped into my head is they move differently yeah in happy feet the penguins really do move the way that penguins move they have a really funny walk to them they don't have quite as much balance as you would expect until they're in the water when they're like perfect swimming machines and in surfs Mm -hmm. up they they move more in a human nature they still have a penguin style walk to them but they're a lot more capable on land than the penguins are in happy feet with the exception of mumble and his fantastic dancing the guy knows how to tap he does know how to tap we also have a variety of different kinds of species or at least a bigger variety in surfs up every penguin is a different size in fact there are overweight penguins there's muscly penguins there's sexy penguins they're beautiful they're beautiful animals and there is some of that in happy feet but you're correct there's a lot less of it i think there's like basically we see maybe three different species of penguin that show up in happy feet yes the empress penguin the groucho penguin and the Latin Antarctic penguin. Yes. I don't, okay, I don't fully know how I feel about Robin Williams's portrayal of this Latin penguin because it's, it's hysterical. It's really funny, but Robin Williams is not, he's, he's not Latino in any way that I know of. So it's very conflicting for me because part of me is like, I don't know if that's okay. That's what it comes down to. What, is it okay? Or what? Come on, guys, give me some insight. I don't think it's okay. Okay. I, think, not okay. I, I, I don't think it's okay. Fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's like, I'm fine with that. The problem, though, is that his character's got some great fucking jokes. <laughs> like, that's the thing. Those penguins roasting Mumble is hysterical to me. They're a roast crew. That's what they are. It's like, this is this Comedy Central roast of Mumble. I love the Amigos. They're so funny. They they lighten up the movie. They they like with the movie. You think it's dragging a little bit, and then the Amigos show up, and they just brighten your day. Although, what's up with uh, Mumble fat shaming a leopard seal? Well, somehow he says goodbye, fatty. Well, sometimes when you try to roast somebody when you're trash talking, you overreach or you just don't do a good job. But to be fair, that leopard seal just tried to fucking murder them. Okay, like if somebody came into my apartment right now with a knife and I successfully disarmed them, I would talk mad shit. I would be all up in their face. I agree. I agree. If someone's trying to kill you, they have uh, forfeited their rights to really anything (laughs) if they're attacking you, especially this leopard seal, which is trying to eat Mumble. And it's conceivably the same leopard seal that murdered 
Cody Maverick's father. I think that is it Cameron. It could be. Yes. We got a little crossover, yeah. I mean, they were both in Antarctica about the same time, so it's not unbelievable to feel that that is the case. So I want to talk a little bit more about differences. It's the filmmaking style in these movies. So there's this documentary style, real, real, real documentary, real characters, real existing characters, to Surf's Up. And it's made by, and that film is directed by uh, a couple of animation directors guys that came up in animation i did some a little bit of research and one of the directors of surf's up is chris buck who went on to direct the frozen films and the other co-director you i'm forgetting his name ash brannon he worked at pixar uh and came, came up at pixar and went on to direct a couple of movies i don't know if they were all with sony which is what surf's up is with but these animation directors are creating this animation in a grounded style, a documentary style. The the camera is always in a place as if an operator were using it. And on the other side with Happy Feet, you have George Miller and he is not an animation director previous to this. And he's coming at this new animated style as a, or you know a, a typical narrative filmmaker he sees animation as an opportunity to just do whatever the hell he wants. And his camera is just flying around. All the chase and action sequences are just elaborate. The camera is constantly in motion and doing things that you could never do with the camera in real life, even though he does a lot of crazy stuff in Fury Road eventually. Um, and in really in all of his movies. But it's just so interesting to me, difference-wise, that you have the animated guys trying to make something that feels like real life, and then you have the narrative director trying to make something as unreal as he possibly can. <laughs> and, and ultimately, I think that's what made Happy Feet stick out more, because you're using a brand new animation tool. You're unhinging everything, and it's brand new as far as uh, uh, feel is concerned. And of course, George Miller is going to do that. I just, I cannot get over in it how in Happy Feet... He's trying to, like, go for the cosmic, even. And this is a movie, I love it, it's about a tap dancing penguin with a jukebox musical. And he's trying to, like, tie it into the cosmic. Again, it starts in space and zooms in, and the title is in the sun. It says Happy Feet. It's, like, popping out of the sun, and then it zooms down to Earth to a bunch of singing penguins. And then, like, later in the movie, like, we zoom out from Earth, and Earth is, like, this teeny little marble in the, in, in the space. It's so strange. It's so strange what he's trying to do with that. I don't know what he's really trying to do, what sort of connection he's trying to make, but it's something. He's going for it. There's definitely a bigger picture nature to Happy Feet, which is super interesting considering how personal the character relationships are in Happy Feet. So it's got both going. It's got these very important interpersonal relationships like father, son, mother, son, and then... Well, also just the self-journey. Like, it's just, it's it's a very personal and tender self-journey for Mumble. And of course, boy-penguin, girl-penguin relations. Yeah. And then we also are connecting that, the relationship with the nature around them. And then we even go crazy meta at some point where we're pulling out and seeing human beings interact with these penguins. Oh my God. And actually seeing, I, I, I believe it wasn't animated. It was just connected human beings at certain points, uh, a la Who Framed Roger Rabbit, bringing them into the same world. And it just goes crazy. That's one of the things that is super strange about Happy Feet is that it touches on all of these things so the you never fully know where the story is going to go because it hits all of the notes where Surf's Up is a much more straightforward journey it does I don't necessarily think it hurts either film it's just it's, it's a major difference between them Surf's Up is definitely a little more uh simple and linear as you know penguin can surf Leaves home for ultimate penguin surfing competition on the island of Pengu. We can all relate to that. Natch. Yeah, absolutely. Real place. Pengu. Great waves. You can wicked surf. W wicked surf, man. W wicked surf. It's wicked awesome. But you got Happy Feet, and normally the end of that type of straightforward traditional movie would end at the hour mark in Happy Feet when he returns and dances and, you know, changes everyone's mind. It's basically penguin footloose but then it takes a weird third act turn to where he ends up imprisoned in sea world 
and he j gets the humans somehow to help them because they're the ones that scared off the fish in the first place. So kind of a weird uh, eco message to go with that. Yes. So Max, to that point. So Mumble, he gets he's in Sea World, and there are people, as Joey pointed out, real people watching him. They're not animated. This is a crossover of live action and animation. And <laughs> these people are watching this penguin who tries to communicate to them through tap. I have to posit a question to the two of you. If the world discovered a tap dancing penguin at SeaWorld, do you think we would stop overfishing around Antarctica? Depends on how good he was. <laughs> what about mem mumble good? We're talking mumble good. Oh man, fishing's done. Uh, I'm with you. I don't think so, unfortunately. Uh, I would hope so. I want that to be the true reality. And I think we are becoming more environmentally conscious as a world, especially as the United States. So I think it would be possible. I just don't know if th if that's the the seismic shift. You don't think that that would that's the that's the like final straw. You don't think that that's just like we're right on the edge and just that tap dancing penguin is all we need to stop overfishing. That's exactly correct. I don't think that that tap dancing penguin would put us over the top, which is super unfortunate. I feel like the tap dancing penguin would work if that tap dancing penguin was discovered 30 years ago. That would be enough of the limit. But now we've slowly let it get so bad that the tap dancing penguin is like, huh, well, I guess he's also got a feed, you know, so he just learned to tap. It's like a natural evolution. It wouldn't, people would take it the wrong way. They'd be like, oh, that's cool. Put him in movies. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. That, that's cool. I'm bored now. Yeah, exactly. He, 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 he'd he uh, go viral on the TikToks. The Gen Zers would be sharing all his tap dance videos. So long, sea shanties. Hello, tap dancing penguins. Also, that's a hell of a jump, too. It's like, okay, he's tapping in front of hundreds of thousands of people, and then the next scene, we're back in Antarctica, and he shows up again. How did he convince them? How did they find out exactly where he lived? <laughs> he spoke to the Max, the tap dancing. It got through to everyone, the entire world. We see the UN discussing this tap dancing penguin, and they're like, this cannot stand. We must stop overfishing around Antarctica. Half of me really thought that they were going to have him testify in like that section. <laughs> <laughs> just have him up at the UN tap dancing his heart out just to save Antarctica. Uh, and I'm pretty glad that that didn't happen. But it's a beautiful still image. The hell out of it. Hard disagree. Hard <laughs> disagree. Now that you've brought it up, I can't think of anything else. And if anyone would do that, it would be George Miller. I don't know who talked him out of that or how that didn't cross his mind, but it's a shame. I need to be on some of these pitch meetings is what it is. He had to save some crazy stuff for the sequel, which, by the way, did happen and has Brad Pitt and Matt Damon as gay krill. Have you guys seen Happy Feet 2? I haven't. I did not for the sake of this podcast. Yeah, I've seen it. It's been a while, though. It's not like I just watched it last night or anything. Yeah, no. Yeah, you didn't do extra credit for this. No, 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 no. Didn't watch it. I, I mean, it's been a while. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen the gay krill. They're they're cute. They're little cuties. Brad and Matt, they're they're cute. Little krill. Um, it's great. It's delightful. But uh, it's been a long time. Been a real long time since I've seen that film. So I've got to go with one random thing here that I just realized is that there's another similarity where Mumble is chasing down the giant ships. There's an exact correlation where Cody is chasing down a whale ship, but it's not a whaling ship. It's a, it's just a whale that the penguins use as a ship, which is really fun. And I really, ha I really want to see that someday. Some penguins riding a whale that would make me, <laughs> that might actually make my life if I ever saw that happen. <laughs> Although, speaking of trying to catch up, we do have to move along, and, you know, as far as fishy segues go, that's uh, a pretty good one, as we have to move into our favorite segment, History, Facts, and Box Office! Before we move into this segment, I mean, I guess I guess we're in it now, but, Max, you just said that a whale's a fish? Max, do you think a whale's a fish? No, no, I said it was a fishy segue, it's not the same thing. Okay, I think that's erasure of what you just said, but fine, I fine, think fine. we just gotta clarify really quick for everyone in the audience, whales are not fish whales are people too i agree with what max just said because joey you added a question mark at the end and you need to be more certain about these things you, know, you need to be supportive 
Su- support it? Moving yes. on, Max. Which one of these <laughs> movies made more money? Well, I do want to correct you a little bit from your previous statement, as both of these movies do have sequels. However, only one was released f- theatrically, and that was Happy Feet 2. I always have to bring uh, attention to Surf's Up to Wave Mania, which is a sequel starring several WWE superstars, including John Cena and Vince McMahon. Did you say something about... Bah, 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 bah. I mean, it's funny because they they advertise John Cena as a penguin, but I I didn't see him at all. (laughs) Joey's laughing really hard at that. He's he's like gone. He's gone from the video chat. (laughs) He he just dropped off screen. And that's a wrestling insider joke, everyone. (laughs) Yeah, that's why I'm standing over here with just a blank ass look on my face. Like, I, I didn't get the joke. You can't see me. I really, really want someone to take the time and to go through all of his old <laughs> matches and just rotoscope him out of it so it's just an invisible man beating the fuck out of people. I would, like, that would be amazing. Going back, jumping back, uh, you are absolutely correct. One did make a buttload of uh, more moolah than the other. Happy Feet, the clear winner in that contest. Domestically, it made $198 million, 186 Ooh. internationally, so... About 384 worldwide off of a $100 million budget. Dang. The fact that I know about Happy Feet and its budget. So it came out in 2006. So I would have been a senior in high school. In fact, I think we all would have been seniors in high school at the same high school um together did you go to did you go to school with us max yeah i don't remember i was just like i was I, we didn't have a lot of crossover in classes you guys were the jocks you were the cool kids popular always had ladies hanging off of your arms uh dudes too you guys didn't discriminate i, I like the, i like the uh, story me, i was over in the av club i was you know just kind of a chubby kid kind of awkward had trouble talking to girls because i just spent a lot of time looking at national geographic anyway moving uh, on uh <laughs> yeah we anyway got... oh wait oh i lost my train of thought so anyway 2006 we were all in high school happy feet comes out in i think it was like around november and it comes out as counter programming to casino royale yes 007 daniel craig's first go as bond and it slays bond Bond comes in number two at the box office the week that it premieres alongside Happy Feet. It beats it. And it can and Happy Feet continues to beat it every single week. Casino Royale never reached number one at the box office because Happy Feet was number one at the box office throughout Casino Royale's like first few weeks run. It never hit it. I wanna admit one thing here to the audience. I saw one of those two films in theaters, and it was Happy Feet. <laughs> I never saw Casino Royale in a theater. <laughs> I know I did. I snuck into it. Ooh, there you go. There you go. So you hurt, you hurt his box office more than you helped. Yeah, obviously one didn't make as much money. Go, jumping back again. Off of the same $100 million budget, I might add, though. Uh, Surf's Up only made $58 million domestically, 93 overseas for $152 million worldwide. Ouch. Ooh. That's rough. Which is kind of crazy. I was there opening weekend for both of them. Yeah, they both uh, had the same budget, which is kind of crazy because I think that is. Only, I think one looks way better than the other. But I think that might have to be because Animal Logic, the studio that produced the animation for Happy Feet, that was I think it's its first movie, and they've done well. They went on to do the Lego movies, which look fantastic. But um, Sony Image Works, which did uh, Surf's Up, they'd already done a couple movies. They had uh, open season for one, so they uh, were a little better at it. That wasn't that far before that, too, though, Max. You're right. Like, Sony was still kind of new, in the, at least in the computer-generated animation space. I think it, uh, open season was the first, and wasn't Surf's Up just, like, the second? Like, it was pretty quick after it. Open season was, like, 2003, and this is 2007, so there's some, okay, so it was there's some development. After. Okay, it is weird that both of these movies, like, we're not talking about, like, a Disney movie versus, uh, I don't know, and gosh, there's not a lot of... Anna- DreamWorks, I guess, is the only other big one. We're talking about a Warner Brothers versus Sony. That's kind of strange. It's it's rare. It's also kind of weird because we already established that uh, George Miller did whatever the hell he wanted with Happy Feet and the camera movement. So they're on new ground, whereas Surf's Up was a little more traditional as far as that's concerned. Bes- besides adding the, the documentary angle. Animal Logic, the company that did the animation for Happy Feet, yeah, they were just an effects company. It would be like ILM 
deciding to make an animated movie. It's, you know, like a fully animated movie. And they which have. I, guess, and I mean, at this amazing. point, they kind of have. Yeah, Rango. Oh, well, there you go. A few years after that. And there's another example of a traditionally live action filmmaker taking a dip into the animation and making something crazy. And both of them winning best animated feature at the Academy Awards, no less. Yeah, there you go. Coming off of the budgets, which we have as the same, and the crazy box office differences, how were they reviewed? Did did they come across similarly? Obviously, I just mentioned one won an Academy Award, but other than that, how did people receive these movies? Almost identically. Yeah? Like they were reviewed about the same? Uh, one of them uh, has a critical score of 79%, audience 70 on Rotten Tomatoes. Another one has 76% critically, and also 70% audience on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, damn. Whoa. Which one is higher, do you suppose? You know, I would guess Happy Feet. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna flip it. Surf's Up. You'd be correct. Surf's Up is better reviewed on Rotten Tomatoes. Huh. Crazy. Okay. Although, I will add, I noticed there was an absurd amount of audience reviews on Happy Feet, so that might have been a bot crashed one. Bot crashed. Oh, just like a bunch of, oh, okay. Like Sabbath Robots. Yeah, I, like, like robots. Well, like a bunch like, of a, a bunch of like, profiles like, with no pictures saying, "Oh, one star, this sucked." Who would do that to the penguins? Same people that did a Captain Marvel. Who would do that to the ladies? Assholes. It's a shame. Did we have any other critical information, or can I just ask you the next logical question in my brain? Um, yeah, we did have some. Uh, we always like to take into account Metacritic as well. So for Surf's Up, we have 64 out of 100 there. User score is 8.2, which is very good. Uh, we also have Metacritic for Happy Feet, which is 77 out of 100. Critically, user score 6.2 out of 10. So Surf's Up beats it there as well. That's interesting. I think that's I think that's people not appreciating something that's a little weirder because Surf's Up is definitely the more conventional of the two films. So, Joey, you mentioned, like, so one of these films won an Oscar. And I just wanted to say, like, that specifically, that's Happy Feet. Happy Feet won the Oscar in 2007 for 2006. And that's George Miller's only Oscar, because he did not win anything for Fury Road. Which is an outrage. Yeah, that's so weird. <laughs> and, uh, and then Surf's Up was also nominated in 2008, because it came out in 2007. But it was beat by Ratatouille. That dirty rat. Hard to beat that one. Ratatouille is a pretty excellent film. But moving past our critical reviews, I just gotta check in. Since we do have two Penguin movies coming out within a year of each other, did they have any history? Was there any reason why they came out at the same time? Or was it just pure dumb luck? I have a feeling it was more pure dumb luck on this one, because like Andrew said, there's a ridiculous amount of pre-production that goes into uh, making these movies. And both of them started up around 2002, getting everything rolling. It was pure coincidence that a hit documentary about penguins came out a couple years beforehand. So the audience was primed for these. In fact, the only reason they wouldn't have been more primed is because those damn penguins from Madagascar got in on the action first. God, the world just gripped with penguin fever there in the late aughts. Just incredible. Uh, Joey, your question and Max, that whole bit reminded me that so they are a little bit in conversation with one another. So Surf's Up came out later after Happy Feet. As such, it gets to make a dig at Happy Feet in its opening moments. Like one of the first lines in the movie is a dunk on Happy Feet in Surf's Up. Did you guys catch that? It's Absolutely. so I don't know. I can't remember what he says. But Cody Maverick, he he dunks on the singing, dancing penguins like in the first like five seconds oh, of the movie. Oh yeah, he does. They ask him. I I don't remember the exact quote, but he, the the documentary filmmakers ask him, "Well, do you do anything else besides surf?" And he's just like, "What do you mean, like dance and sing or something like that?" No, all, I just surf. What is? Do yeah. I need to do anything else? <laughs> he like dismisses it. He's like, "Ugh, surfing or I mean, uh, singing, dancing, ugh, whatever." Yeah, this penguin don't need no heart song. But you need the heart song. All penguins need their heart song. It's all about the pedal. I also just really quick, while we're still kind of on, like, I think this is uh, on the same topic. Do either of you guys know one of the taglines for Surfs Up? No. No. What? No. <laughs> do you have any guesses? It's like hang flipper. No, no, Joey, do you have any guesses? Nope, nope, I got I got nothing. Whatever you think of is, is not going to be good enough. <laughs> because what it is, is, and Max, you're going to love this. This is right up your alley. A major ocean picture. I'm grabbing my flippers here. <laughs> God damn it. I'm upset that Titanic didn't use that 10 years before, though. <laughs> 
every James Cameron movie should be using that. The Abyss should have been using that. <laughs> a major ocean picture. And no, no, the, Abyss, the Abyss's tagline was, this is a deep movie. Ooh, it's deep. All right, so before we break out uh, our choices for winners in this particular case, I do want to mention kind of a similarity slash difference. Both of these movies have stellar voice casts. However, totally different types of performances as far as actors are concerned. Happy Feet... You got Elijah Wood as Mumble. You got Hugh Jackman and Nicole Kidman as his parents. Uh, the late Brittany Murphy as his love interest, Gloria. Uh, Ron Williams, double roles. And then, yeah, you have uh, Surf's Up. Shia LaBeouf, asshole as he is now, was uh, just beginning his genesis in Hollywood uh, in 2007. Main character, Jeff Bridges as kind of a dude penguin. John Heater Perfect. from Napoleon Dynamite as, you know, the illustrious Chicken Joe. And, uh, yep. of my course, enemy. Yep. Yeah, of course uh, James Woods as an asshole otter. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. The, the otter. James Woods. <laughs> the introduction to that character, he's Don King the otter because he's the hype man for <laughs> the big surfer penguin. And he has Don King hair, you know, that sticks straight up. He's an otter. And the first scene we see him and he's in a hot tub. And at one point he stands up and they blur his crotch. What? And they only do this at the one time in the movie. They don't do this the rest of the movie, even though he's not wearing any clothes like the rest of them because they're all animals. They don't wear clothes. But I just, I, I had to call that out because it's so weird <laughs> it made me laugh i missed that oh it's it's great because he like freaks out on the camera crew because he's he's pretending to to care he's like i need i need a minute and then they just don't quit rolling and so then he keeps going with his shtick and in that moment how i justified that later andrew is that when he's in the hot tub he's got an erection so it's noticeable he doesn't have that <laughs> any of the rest of the movie so they don't need to blur it you're probably right. That's a really good way of putting it. <laughs> so not only is an asshole, he's a dick. Hey, oh, oh. zing, pow, pow. Um, But yes, now I think after all of that discussion, it is time for us to decide who is. Winner, winner, who's, who's the winner? winner? You know what? I think that this has turned into a lot of fun, and I'm really glad that Cousin Andrew randomly popped in here. I want to let him make his Completely choice. unplanned. I want not, him to not go at all first. Planned. Honestly, it isn't even close to being planned. They're aware that it's not planned, people. So, guys, we... just join. I hate to interrupt you, but uh, whoever's listening to this, because I guess this is a podcast? Question mark. This wasn't planned. Like I just dropped in. I was having a great. It's Friday. Great Friday night. Just saw that link in the family video chat. Family Messenger thought I would hop into the video chat to see my favorite cousins. And who? boy, who would have thought that I'd be talking about two of my favorite movies of all time that I have not watched at all recently. So, Cousin Andrew... I, I hate to interrupt you, Joey, but uh, I just want to apologize to Cousin Andrew. I've been a bit mean to him on this one. It's fun seeing you. It's been a while, and I'm sorry that we might have uh, brought up any feelings over the course of the podcast. Thank you, Max. I feel seen. I feel appreciated. I appreciate you. Thank you. So now, I think because of how this has turned out and how much fun it's been, I would like to give our unexpected guest, Cousin Andrew, the first go here and let us know which one Which one did you like more? This is a tough one. It's really close. You know, as a recovering penguophile, I am keen on both. I like any movies featuring my favorite of the animal kingdom, the penguins, especially the Groucho penguins and Empress penguins. It's close. You know, it's it's kind of a dead heat because, again, Happy Feet, I like seeing the real style animation with that one. You know, seeing the penguins the way they actually are and the other creatures, it's interesting. But at the same time, the character design of Surf's Up definitely is more emotive. The characters, is easy to kind of see how they're feeling. Happy Feet, because they all look kind of real, it's some kind of hard to read what they're thinking or how they're feeling in the moment. And I'll be honest, even though I like that they sing, it's a little weird when they open their very real beaks to sing. It's a little off-putting. But I'm still going to give the edge to Happy Feet, that withstanding. Because there's a real director at work here, folks. George Miller is the real deal. And that guy 
just you can tell he's like a kid in a candy store in that film and it's just going to town it's the sort of movie that it just throws everything down it just drops it on the table right away singing penguins and it's incredible you know he's just having a delight the camera's just zooming through the air it's thrilling at times and so even though some of the performances and the animation is a little off-putting throughout, I'm still going to give it the edge because I think there's more of a mind at work in Happy Feet. You know, I'm glad that you went first and so eloquently stated your point because I'm sure that I will drop the ball on the eloquency. So let's, Never. let's go ahead and You're I'm, beautiful. Gonna, I'm jumping in, Max. I'm interrupting you this time. I'm that going was him. next. I wasn't interrupting you. He was interrupting you. What did you do just now? Yeah, Max, what'd you do just now? You look great. Your hat looks great. I'm just, waiting, I'm just waiting for Joey to talk again so I can interrupt him. Well, I would have to start talking. I'm sorry, to Joey. Go, Damn it, cousin Andrew. You've started this problem. <laughs> you jumped in and interrupted the podcast, and now Max has it in his head that he can interrupt me whenever he wants. Totally different from any time I was doing it before. We're fine. Everything's we'll fine. We're done. We're done. Joey, please. I really want to know which movie of these two you like the most. Here's, here's the thing. Wait, which one did you like, Joey? Both of them are great. As we've discussed, there's a lot of good elements. I think Happy Feet definitely has more of the emotional arc. Like, I am legit. I'm, there's moments in Happy Feet where I am, like, on the verge of tears. And then I'm also on the verge of just, just so emotionally invested. I want their love story to be real. I want it to come true for Mumble. I'm cheering for him the whole time. <laughs> Whereas Cody, you know, it's more of a, a traditional, like, jock kind of like meeting his mentor and, be, and hitting that next level kind of sports story it's not it's not quite as unique in that way also i think i just laughed a lot more at happy feet as well it's a weird combination happy feet hit me with so many different levels of emotions that i gotta give the edge to happy feet by a slight margin because honestly i'm a sucker for fucking surfers I did not expect <laughs> for me to enjoy just penguins surfing that much. The visual of penguins surfing, the visuals of the, the penguins on like the hieroglyphics of a penguin holding a surfboard in the beginning of the movie. If you guys check that out, it's I would have that as a bumper sticker in a heartbeat. But yeah, happy feet with the slight edge for me. Wow, I wish I hadn't gone last because I'm actually going the other way. I preferred surfs up. Woohoo! Okay. Okay. Tell us why, Please. brother. Everything you said about Happy Feet was absolutely correct. <laughs> George Miller behind the camera, so to speak, is fantastic. There's a voice there. It's actually a movie about something, which is impressive. However, the reason mostly I'm going with Surf's Up is just it's fun. It's more fun for me, and it's trying something different with the animation. Not so much that it's off the rails like Happy Feet is, but they're trying the documentary angle, which is something new I haven't seen in animation before. And the animation is gorgeous. Like, I think it's a better looking movie than Happy Feet is for reasons we've discussed before, but it's just colorful. It's kind of what I want to see uh, in an animated movie. Because we're in Antarctica almost the entire time in Happy Feet, all the colors are pretty much the same, and it becomes kind of just a blur to look at. Another reason I didn't quite connect with Happy Feet as much is kind of the same reason I don't connect with Up, in that in the third act, it tries a little too much. Like, it should have toned it down just a little. I appreciate what George was trying to say. He's trying to make an environmental film. He's trying to talk about uh, mental issues and ostracizing the different. And then all of a sudden, it, all of it is just combined together like up you have dogs and biplanes you have a giant adventurer and a blimp when it was supposed to be this movie about an old guy and a kid and a weird bird in south america and it's it's just too much at that point and it's it, it, it's simple it's a fun sports movie it has performers i like hearing uh and it's colorful and pretty funny and of course chicken joe who ties the whole room together as far as uh, the movie is concerned. My mortal enemy, yes. <laughs> I think you make a good point about what Happy Feet could have done better. And this is a weird thing. Happy Feet should have probably been 20 minutes longer. And it's already a pretty long animated <laughs> movie. But it really should have. I think if you do that, you can make... You can make Maybe not 20. We'll go with 10. But you can make that, that, that third act work a little bit better if you just give it a little bit more time. Like, give 
Give Mumble an interaction with one of the other penguins in SeaWorld where he fucking talks to them. He can talk to every other goddamn penguin. Did these penguins not learn how to speak? Are they all mute? I don't understand. I'm not knocking it at all. It tries... It reaches for some stuff that's crazy for an animated movie. I appreciate the hell out of it. But I think, yeah, that extra 10 minutes probably could have done it better. It just came down to fun for me. And yeah, Surf's Up was more fun. Which I completely get because it was really fun. I It was the first time I'd ever seen it was this time. And that's why I didn't expect it to be quite as close as it was. But I'm glad that it that it was. That I got to enjoy both of these movies so much. You're talking about adding length to any movie starring penguins? I'm there. If you're watching I'm it, there. If, if you're watching it, I'm sure there's already added length. How dare you, Max? <laughs> we were, we were, we were, we had just, we had, I thought we had broken through, and then we twist, oh, the knife. Wait, Ugh. hang on. <sighs> What's behind you right now? <sighs> there's like a bird in your bathroom. I can see it. What? There's... Ignore that. What? Wait, it's looking right at me. You see you see what? You saw nothing. There was nothing there. Wait. There was there's nothing there. I saw at hey. least several Are you Mr. Poppering right now? A great movie. Talk about great movie. Great actor. Jim Carrey. That guy, what an actor. Dude, ass. that's not even the first Jim Carrey movie with penguins now that I'm thinking of it. Friggin' Ace Ventura. He's got no, penguins sir. in his bathtub in that movie too. Oh my god. Are you just are you Jim Carrey? I am not Jim Carrey. Thank you. I take that as a compliment. I am another beautiful white man, but alas, no. Who loves penguins, mind you? Another beautiful white man who likes penguins, but I'm not Jim Carrey. And you saw nothing. I, the, the door behind me, just a door, just a regular bathroom, a regular bathroom door, nothing behind it, no, uh, you know, is amphibious that, birds. Is that a dog door on Living that? in the bathtub. You're just, you're letting the movies get to your head. You guys, you watch too many movies. You know what? I don't really want to go any further into this right now because I don't care. Andrew is a good cousin and I want him to live his life however he sees fit. As long as he is not harming any creatures out there in any non-consensual manner. Let's move Joey, forward. cousin Joey, thank you. Thank you. I feel seen. I feel understood. I feel safe. Well, so we come to the end of another fantastic episode of Twinum Cinema. Family name. It's canon. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Joey and Max and Andrew Twinema. It's like, and well, your sister Tara, Tara Twinema. Thank you for joining us, cousin Andrew. Is there any what, anything you want to plug? Any social media handles you want to attribute to yourself? <laughs> I mean, I've kind of incriminated myself a little bit on my po- on this podcast. I mean, I guess it's a podcast. Yes, I suppose I will. I will plug uh, Two Jackets Productions. It's the film production company that I share with Marcus Mann and Eric Carlson. You can look at twojackets.com for all of our past work, including short films. Most recently, we made a film about Santas that eat people. So check that out. Uh, and then we also, we don't do it anymore, but it's still available on a lot of your favorite podcast streams. Check out Sham Fiction. It's a podcast where we write fan fiction about stuff that we've never read or seen before. And it's a guess. So maybe look, take, take a look at those. Or check those out. Sounds good. Thank you, Cousin Andrew. Thank you both. It's lovely seeing your, your two very similar, like eerily similar faces. Max, thank you for putting your hat on with the Shiverpool narwhals. I, I, I dig that hat. I'm, I'm taking the hat off now. Oh my god, you're too similar. I'm, I'm logging off. <laughs> well, that was so much fun, and thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Twinima Cinema. Please check us out um, on all of our social medias, Twinima Cinema on Instagram and Cinema Twinima on Twitter. We have a YouTube page now that has all of our episodes as well. And as always, we appreciate if you check out the donation links in our description. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff we would love for uh, some, you know, extra coin to go to, including our coffee page, but uh, we're b- at the bottom of that list. So give it a look and uh, donate to some worthy causes if you can. Thank you guys so much. Keep wearing your masks. We're getting through this. Be safe, everyone. For the next episode, we have a triple threat match between three qualified teams of four or more members. Who's going to win? Find out.